lesson number 18, the second part of our series on vacuum chucking. Last time we talked about the hardware to get a negative pressure inside the project we want to run. Today I want to show you the various chucks that uh, either are on the market or that you can make. So I brought an array here just to kind of walk you through some differences. On the right hand, on my right hand side, your left hand side, is a series of two chucks out of three that is made by one-way manufacturing. These are turned solid aluminum. The edge is rolled over and a rubber seal is applied. Inserts are put in the back to adapt to whatever your lathe thread is. Commercial, very heavy. Do I use them? Yes. Woodfast makes this one, which is a much lighter chuck. It's phenolic material, but two nice rubber O-rings on it here to make a good seal either inside or outside, depending on how we're going to grab a product. And then again, fitted to your lathe thread. These are much less expensive, work just fine. So if your product fits one of these, that's great. But for me, many times what I'm working on isn't a perfect fit for one of these commercial chucks. So I make my own. And here are some examples from different sizes. On all of the ones I make, I use a commercial face plate because I know that this face is perpendicular to the axis of the lathe because of the way it was manufactured. I use phenolic or acrylic material here to screw to the face plate because I know it does not leak. And then I'm using all sorts of things I found in the hardware store, different diameters and sizes for the body of the chuck. And this is where we're going to put one of these together in a little while. And the foam seals are a closed cell foam that I pick up at a Hobby Lobby or Michael's store. These sheets cost 90 some odd cents for a huge sheet out of which I can cut a number of uh, pieces of seal. Larger. Here's a piece I made out of an adapter. Large down to a smaller diameter, but this gives me more depth for certain kinds of projects. Same thing again, smaller, different size pipe. This is the way I normally build them, but every now and then I want something else. You can buy at various fastener stores what's called a fender nut that looks very much like this. It has a flat surface and a thread that are perpendicular to each other, very, very uh, well machined. Here's a three-quarter ten. Here's a one by eight. And I've just buried it into a piece of wood and put my chuck on the other side. Now, notice what's unique here. Wood is porous. It's going to always leak a certain amount of air. So I've totally sealed every surface of this with epoxy because all these pores in the wood are going to be a potential leak. Here's one size really small projects occasionally. There's a smaller one still with that 1x8 fender nut buried in a piece of wood. These were made by a friend of mine many years ago. It's a standard nut welded to a piece of galvanized pipe. I'm going down in quality here as you can see and with a nice foam seal on it. Does this work? Yes. Uh, it's not very elegant but it does seal tight but this nut doesn't set tight to the headstock of the lathe. It requires a washer to get a good seal. Here's a poor example I want to show you, believe it or not. Uh, first of all, this is three layers of wood that have been glued up. This is going to be porous and air is going to leak through the pores. This needed to have been sealed. The piece of pipe has been stuffed down in here and not sealed. Third, and maybe the most important, is this foam seal. While it conforms nicely to irregular shaped objects like a, a warped out green bowl, things like this foam or wetsuit material is too thick and too spongy to hold a product solidly in place. It's going to tend to want to do like this. So I avoid this kind of foams. I want to show you something entirely different, but they are still vacuum chucks. Here's a small one. This surface has been sealed. I built a fence around here with a piece of tape. I put a tube in the center and I poured some mold release material in here, a two-part mold release, 
set it dead flat on the surface, used a bubble level to be sure it's dead square, and let it dry overnight. And now I have a rubbery surface that will take a perfectly um, flat edge. And this is very useful for some kinds of projects. Not many, but every now and then, this is the one I need. This whole surface has been sealed. This is wood, but I had to seal every bit of this to be sure that we have absolutely no leaks. Same thing, bigger. Occasionally I have a product has a flat ring and I need a big flat surface. I did precisely the same thing. Built a tape edge around there, a dam in the center, poured in my mold release material after having leveled this thing off in both planes and walked away. 24 hours later, I have a gummery surface that makes a really, really great seal. I use that very infrequently, but every now and then, it's a nice item. So, some options. What do we want to do is clear this area off. And I'm going to show you how I put one of these together. All the steps from here to here. So let me push this stuff out of the way, bring the components in here, and talk about the steps that I'm going to go through, and then we'll do it. Be right back. Cleared out those chucks, and I want to show you how I build uh, my vacuum chucks. First of all, I'm going to use a commercial faceplate. I'm going to find a piece of acrylic of the right size. I roughly turned this. I drilled and tapped these holes. This happens to be uh, 832 thread. And when I screw this on with into these tapped holes, I'm going to have a very tight, vacuum tight seal at each of those holes. I'm still going to put a bead of caulk around here. Screw that on. But I screw it onto the side that still has the paper. Because the paper is like a small seal. So I'm going to screw this on here. I've already marked for the diameter chuck I want, so I know where the outside of this is going to be. So for the material for the chuck, I've got to choose um, some type of pipe. This is all called Schedule 40. And as the diameter increases, the wall thickness also tends to increase. So for Schedule 40, the, the nominal wall thickness is 3 8 But Schedule of pipe actually comes from the metal industry and it talks about how much pressure it can support. And so as the pipe gets bigger, it takes a bigger wall to support the same amount of pressure. So if I was going to put a small one on here, I'm going to have a thinner wall, medium size, a little thicker bigger. I can actually connect these things and create all sorts of different configurations. So I need my faceplate and screws. I have drilled and tapped. I'm going to fasten this down here. Then we're going to go to the lathe and put the vacuum hole here and dig a groove. Well, I'll probably take the short one here. That this will sit down in. And that's the next stage here. Um, you can pick this up at a lot of different uh, plastic dealers out here in California. We have a Mr. Plastics and we have a Tap Plastics and in their junk bin sometimes I can pick up material thick enough. Rough cut it on the bandsaw, screw it onto the faceplate, put it on the lathe and make it nice and smooth around here. Uh, and I've actually faced this side off also to be sure that it's running dead perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this on and then I'm going to go back to the lathe where we've done most of our former lessons and I'm going to dig a groove that this piece will then embed into. So let me screw this together and we're going to step back to the lathe and do the next step. See you in a minute. I'm back at the lathe and we have several things to do. First of all, when I drilled and tapped these holes, I drilled them all the way through the plastic for two reasons. Number one, I'm using what's called a plug tap, which pushes the swarf out ahead, and I give a place for it to go. Drilling into acrylic gets hot, even when you're hand drilling or hand tapping. What happens is you have to stop and clear a lot. So I drilled all the way through, simply to make it easier. 
One could take this off, lay it down flat, and put a drop of CA glue on top of each of these if, if these were leaking. You could do that. But I'm going to go ahead because I think my hold here is going to be pretty good and I will test it. And if it's not perfect, I can go back and put a drop of CA on each of these screws to seal that better. I left the paper backing on, on the back simply to act like a small gasket between the plastic and the metal surface. So this is never going to work without a hole in it. So I'm going to put a hole in the center. And I went back to the cabinet and directed, selected one of our Morse taper drill bits at random. Now I'm going to put the hole in. Right, so we'll, Might as well do that right now. Don't want to drill too fast. Interesting smell as you drill into this material. Remember when you drill into plastic that this gets really hot really fast, so stop and clear your chips frequently. The farther you drill, the more you need to clear. So we have a hole. All the way through. So now it's a vacuum check that's going to work. So I'm going to take my drill bit out. Now, my next activity is to come up here and dig a groove that this will drop down into. I laid this out ahead of time to mark the outside, and I need to find a tool that will cut a nice shallow groove. And I measure the wall thickness on this, and I picked up one of my parting tools. And I find my parting tool is about three-fourths of this distance, so I'm going to be able to cut in here, move over very slightly, and complete the groove. So I want to make this fit, I want to fit relatively snugly. I can glue it in with epoxy or with CA glue, CA meaning cyanacrylate acrylic when it's hardened. This is acrylic, so it would be cementing this piece into place. So what I want to do is cut this. What I have done is already flattened this edge to be sure this is running true. And I'll, I'll test it from time to time. So what I'm going to do is simply come in here. I've adjusted the two rests, so I'm right at dead center. And I'm going to go slightly inside my mark just in case. Before I go too far, let's see if I'm on the mark. It's going to be okay. So it's going to take me a little while to dig that groove in here. I'm going to come down about half of this distance and I'll be back in a couple minutes when I've finished cutting the groove. Okay, I've got my groove. What I'm going to do then is cement this into place. And then I want to do is retrue this edge to this whole system. This has to be exactly true to this lathe and this system. So I'm going to take this off, put a little bit of CA glue in here, put this in place, allow it to dry, and then we'll be back in a minute. I'm going to go off camera for a second, glue this, and we'll be right back to this place. Just finished gluing this in, 
back to the lathe. I want to true this edge up and be sure it's running square and absolutely perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. So a skew chisel is probably the best tool for this because all I want to do is flatten this edge. I want to be sure I'm at center line. I don't want to radius it very much. I just want to be sure it's relatively flat. Very light cuts. All right. So now we know that edge is running true to the lathe. The next thing to do is to put the seal on. So I'm going to take it off and show you how I put the seal on. Let's take it off. Clean up that mess in that here. And I'm going to use this. So now we're going to glue the seal onto the edge. This is the closed cell foam we talked about. What I'm going to do is put a bead of glue on here. And I bought this closed cell foam at Michael's and I bought the foam glue that they recommend. It may be simply the same as normal white glue, but I'm going to use what they suggest. And I'm going to put a small bead here, just around this edge. I know other glues may work equally well, but I've stuck with what they recommend and I've not had any failures, so I've been perfectly okay. I'm make sure there's no gaps. And the process of sealing this on is really pretty simple. Watch this. Done. Now, that's going to sit there. I like mine to sit at least overnight, if not full 24 hours. I don't know how long it takes for this glue to actually cure, so I'm not taking any risks. So this is going to sit here, and I'm going to go put this away, bring another chuck on that looks just like this that has sat here for a full 24 hours to show you the final step. So this gets lifted away. And here. And here's what it looks like after it's sat there for 24 hours. I've got a piece glued on. I'm going to mount it back on the lathe again. And I now need to trim. And the easiest way to do that this is with our trusty skew chisel. I sometimes come along with scissors and trim this down. But that part's trimmed. And now I want to trim on the inside and just the edge of the skew chisel. And here's a piece I can end up using on another project, smaller chuck. So it's done. We screwed it to a faceplate. We squared this up to the faceplate, dug a groove in it, glued on our plastic pipe, and glued on the seal. Now, sometimes over wear, these seals will eventually break down. Fine, I always have plenty of this. I re the edge, a little bit of touch of glue on it again, put another piece on. So there's your vacuum chuck. Any size, any shape you want, you can make. So I hope this series has helped you consider the possibility of adding vacuum chucking to your systems because finishing the bottoms of projects on a vacuum chuck is extremely easy. Saves a lot of difficulties with making special jam chucks and so on. So I hope this has helped you. Our next lesson, believe it or not, is going to be on measuring. I'm going to deal with calipers and measuring for wood turners. See you next time.